Hey everybody, Nick here at Misty Music Studio today, and we are going to be uh, making a song with the Roland S1 only. And uh, my favorite thing about it, just before we can get started, is that it fits in my cute Hello Kitty lunchbox. We're gonna ta-da! There she. Wow, cameras work weird. Everything is backwards from real life. <laughs> Okay, and this is perfect because I fucked up my arm recently and uh, I don't have to, you know, worry about my ability to play an instrument being compromised from an injury with a, such a cute little fun, I want to call it a toy, but it's kind of, it sounds pretty sweet, like I think we can use this to make a pretty professional sounding synthwave track or something. Let's plug it in. We already have an audio track, excellent. Uh, there is an annoying kind of workaround that you may have to do with the S1, uh, which is make sure that it's not on the same MIDI channel that it's receiving on when you're recording the MIDI. I have a whole other video about it, it's kind of confusing. Um, don't worry about it. If you've been clicking around for no reason, it's just because this little guy doesn't play perfectly 100% nice with the computer, but close enough. We're gonna make a song anyway. Let's give it a shot. Hi, Hattie. Hi, Hat. I need to uh, repeat this because I want the delay to kind of. Yeah, 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 we'll do that. Yeah, one more time. Okay, so our hi-hat sound was definitely a little snary, so to make our snare stand out more... Um, for the kick, I'm going to turn up all the oscillators.
let's just process real quick and make this sound more like a kick. Q, compressor. Let's see if we can do just that. Sounds fucked up. Something's wrong. getting ideas. We're getting ideas here. Well, my camera died at some point last night, so let's see where we left off. Uh, let's finish up this track so I can take a shower <laughs> and do my other things for the day. I think this won't take long. I got pretty far last night. Whew. So just a quick recap of everything we've done. We did drums. I made... Uh, hi-hats using noise oscillator I made a, a second hi-hat pattern and it goes like you know there's different parts I made two different snares and then I made a shorter or like a yeah shorter snare. I made a kick. Let's see. It 
definitely sounds chip tuny. The kick does. Uh, for plugins, I'm allowing myself basic tools that come free in most DAWs, such as EQ compression, uh, which I've so far I think only used on the kick. I'm also using a noise gate on the kick to control the transient and just make it very short only. Um, let's see what else. Oh yeah. I used a sample and hold LFO to uh, make the filter move on this hi-hat and it sounds squishy. That's in there somewhere. Alright, I did um, bass. Okay, and then I did um, art bass. And that's me opening up the decay as uh, I think I've had sustain and release at zero and I've had the decay really low and I'm slowly opening it as the art bass goes through. And I did some other things, like I'm opening up the filter later. Um, I think I stacked these bass lines. I may have played with the modulation on this. I think I just played with the resonance and filter maybe. Sounds like it. Yep. So it's like a lot of just playing with the knobs as the same lines replay, or as like a really long line plays, and I'm just sweeping some like sound stuff. Let's see, we made pads. Uh, looks like I automated an EQ uh, to fade in at the beginning. I've been arranging as I go. Um, I made this bass pad. This sounds pretty nice, right? And I made a higher part for the pad too, like a harmony, just like completing the chord split, kind of like how the chord is shaped on guitar. One, five, uh, eight, three. That's it, one, five, eight, three. That's this. And her layer's nice. And, um, what else? I said, so I did some leads, right? This is probably the thing. I don't feel like the camera had to have been dead for this because I did this pretty late. I just played a really long, like, improvised noodle <laughs> solo. And, of course, captured the MIDI. I did three takes, and I cross-faded the three takes together. It's just different ways of me playing with the knobs and changing the sounds. And there's nothing on that right now except for any cues cutting out the low end. Let's see. Which there shouldn't be any low end. <laughs> I have a poly keys kind of sound, I'm not sure if I'll keep it. And I left gray regions where I want to do three more parts. And I have no idea what I want to do. It's sounding pretty finished, so I gotta be very careful uh, adding tastefully here. I think I'm gonna use another arpeggiator track. Let's start with that. <clears throat> oh god, my brain works better with coffee. It's the morning time. We're gonna go fast. Alright, and then let's try our, our arpeggiator. Alright, let's try that. I think I have something to play.
so here's going to be texture. Also, it's really hard because my first instinct is to like reach for uh, Effectrix from Sugar Bites or like Digitalis. Uh, just really great uh, effects processing plugins. And I'm trying not to use any here. I'm trying to just stick to basic plugins and just uh, have the sounds be all from the Roland S1. But I just felt like mentioning fighting the instinct to reach for Digitalis on that part is quite difficult because it does some really cool, um, like, digital glitch looping stuff. <laughs> that would be really cool right there, but it's fine, it's fine. We'll use it on a different song. I need texture. Uh, let's make a big old noise sweep. Right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna use an LFO to FM the oscillator. Uh, <laughs> Does it go fast enough? Fast rate, there we go. Hey! some cool textures to place around places. Uh, I was thinking maybe like another arpeggiator towards the end here. You know what's funny? I don't even know how to change presets on this thing. I've just been making every sound because <laughs> there's not that many knobs. <clears throat> okay. I think that's going to be all my parts. I don't plan on doing any more. I'm going to just mix this out and we'll rendezvous in a second and see how everything's going. Uh, but as far as I know, we're done making sound with this guy for this song. Yeah, let's see how it comes out and we'll, we'll check back in in a minute. <laughs> We've done it. We made an entire song using nothing but the S1, my computer, a USB-C cable, and of course the speakers. Uh, I, it, I'm really happy with it, so I'm ready to share my song. Uh, I just maybe wanted to talk about a little, you know, pros and cons, what I liked about using it, what I didn't like about using it, uh, some things that are good about it, some things that could be better. I don't know. It just seems like the sort of thing you should do on this sort of video. Um, and, I mean, I mean, just made all song with it, so I feel like I got some opinions now to share. Um, so we'll get to the song in a second. I'm excited to share it with you. For now, let's go over my list. Um, we'll do the cons first, and then the pros. We'll get the complaining out of the way. Uh, and it's not really much complaining. And, and, like, all of the cons are to be taken with a grain of salt, because this thing is roughly, like, 199 or something like that. It might be, like, 219 now. Uh, there's no synthesizer you can get for this price that, I, this, to my knowledge, does everything that this does as a piece of hardware. Um, so let's go over the cons first. I did have some trouble syncing the LFO uh, to the rate in the DAW. On the Syntact, it gives you an option to like start the LFO trigger on the start of a note. Uh, and it just seemed like that wasn't happening on here. I don't know if there's an internal setting to get to it. Uh, it was just kind of tricky to do that. It just wasn't, something wasn't syncing up. I don't know if there's a setting I could have changed or figured out how to do. Probably is. 
Uh, which brings me to my next kind of like con about this. Um, some of the functions are hard to get to. Most of everything's very easy. It's like you'd see they're right on here is a shift function that's labeled. Certain things are actually pretty hard to find and access just due to the limited screen. So you kind of need the manual a little bit if you want to use some of the advanced functions. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, the, my biggest annoyance with this is the MIDI, external MIDI workaround. You probably heard me complaining about it, I have like a whole video on this workaround. But um, you can't use this with external MIDI tracks just like normally how you would with a synth, how you would want to. You have to like fiddle with the MIDI inputs. It's, it's like a fairly easy workaround, it didn't hold up the process that much, it's just like mildly irritating. Um, let's see. Minimal, again, just like minimal complaints. The, the D-Motion? Eh, it seems kind of gimmicky. Um, I would have rather instead, if possible, they included like a chorus or an LFO fade function or both, which I think would complement this really well. Um, but they didn't. The D motion's kind of neat. It's gimmicky. Like I don't have an opinion on the uh, draw oscillator or the chop oscillator. I just, uh, I'll use it at some point. It's just not appealing. It just doesn't seem that interesting to me. And. I had a great time working with like the traditional subtractive synth uh, architecture here. So let's get to the pros. What did I like about this? I like the immediacy. Obviously that's, I like that about all hardware. The immediacy of not having to click around and open menus when I want to change the sound and just turn the knob and the sound changes. <gasps> Amazing. Um, it actually, <laughs> second good thing I like about it, it actually sounds really good. Every sound that I wanted to make out of here uh, I was able to make, even if I couldn't get all of the LFOs syncing in the DAW properly, and everything sounded good. Um, like the oscillators sound good, the filter sounds good, the LFO is smooth. Um, let's see, what else do I like? I think I already said most of the functions on this are pretty easy. It's like, it's either on the panel or it's a shift function that you can see on the panel. There's a few complex functions that you have to menu dive for, and the menu diving is pretty difficult because the screen but like pretty much anything you're going to want to do with this is very easy and quick to figure out just by looking at it. Oh yes, let's see. I like that it's affordable. It's like, again, the price is like 200, 220, something like that. And I mean, I would rather make a song with this than like a lot of Moog instruments. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, uh, for one, it has polyphony. Yeah, I, I just really find like it has a more complete feature set for a standard subtractive synthesizer than most Moog synthesizers that cost under $1,200. So I think that's a pretty good reason to get this. If you just want a like powerful subtractive synthesizer and don't want to shell out for something expensive, um, again, I would just, I, I would honestly rather work with this than like any sub $1,200 Moog, like truly. So for like the value is incredible for what you're getting on this. Okay, here's a here's a cool thing. So because it's completely digital, I was kind of expecting to hear some sort of like stepping in the in the change of some of the knobs and the values, and I didn't. They seem to change on a scale of 0 to 255, so I don't know if like that is a small enough increment for the human ear to like hear it as a smooth change or if there's some sort of internal slew uh, which like smooths out any stepping, but it's, I didn't hear any, it just, it sounds good. <laughs> no stepping, as far as I can tell. The built-in battery is really sick. I uh, sometimes will just take this to jam night when I'm feeling lazy, uh, or if I feel like there's gonna be a lot of people and the power outlets are full. This is, the battery lasts like three hours or more on this thing, which is really good. It's like very jammable. You can just take it out and play with it without a computer, which is cool. Absolute favorite thing about this synthesizer, it fits in my, can you see it? Hello Kitty lunchbox. So, uh, that is just really, really, truly amazing. Here it goes. Safe and sound. And we'll bring it to synth night later. Whew. Thanks so much for sticking around everyone. Again, I've been Nick Tuttle at Missing Music Studio and this has been my video and here is my song. I hope you enjoy it.